Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And in this video, we're going to talk about a couple of uh, items that we're going to take care of on this 1991 Volkswagen Transporter, DOCA. Uh, and they're things that I've put off for a year and a half, a little more, since we took possession of this vehicle. So, let me give you the backstory and uh, and then we'll start the project. Back in 2013, we converted this vehicle for a customer for a very specific use, and he had some very specific uh, requirements, let's say. And so it was kind of an unorthodox uh, conversion in some aspects. And one of those we're going to look at in a moment. So anyway, the vehicle was converted in 2013, like I said. Uh, unfortunately, it was never used for its intended purpose, and it was only saw limited use uh, the first year, and then it sat. And bottom line is that this vehicle sat in the Mojave Desert for eight years. And then um, it comes into our possession a year and a half ago. And when received, we did some testing. And in our testing, we found that the battery pack still had the rated capacity. So after eight years of sitting in the desert, these cells, which are Calb cells, which we'll see uh, later in the video, uh, still had their rated capacity. And so we did. Uh, testing on the entire vehicle and it was uh, not perfect in the aspect that uh, uh, the cells were a little bit off at the bottom and we always bottom balance our cells and so uh, when tested we, we found that they weren't perfectly balanced anymore and kind of an idiosyncrasy that we've seen over the last uh, more than a dozen years that we've been using these is that when they're used they just don't vary at all. 97,000 miles in seven and a half years in my VW Carmen Ghia for instance 44 cells after 97,000 miles all were within one one thousandth of a volt. So that's par. Okay, This one was not so close. And so I've wanted to re bottom balance these cells, and life has been in the way. We've been busy. We use this thing for uh, moving warehouses. We, uh, it's used as a shop truck. It's, it's driven weekly, and, and, and a lot of times it's driven daily. So it just hasn't been convenient to pull it out of service and bottom balance the cells. Well, at the same time that we're going to bottom balance these cells, we're going to rectify something else that's always been a little um, issue with me, and I'll show you that in a moment. But this is um, Christmas time, 2022. So between Christmas and New Year's, I'm going to take care of these uh, projects on the vehicle so it's ready to get back into use after the first of the year. That item that has always bothered me is this. This is the charge port on this vehicle. It's from Renko. It's a 110 volt, you know, um, charge port, level one. This vehicle has a, a 2.5 kilowatt charger and um, I forget the kilowatts of the kilowatt hours of the battery pack. 38 180 amp hour cells. But anyway, nothing wrong with it. Like I said, we've been living with it for a year and a half. No issues. Uh, we, we love the vehicle. No problems. I just don't like having the charge port. Well, one 110 for one thing. Um, I prefer to have the J1772. And I recommended the customer not put it here, but 
he was very specific where he wanted this charge port. So specific that he put a little piece of blue tape on the bumper exactly where he wanted it. So that's what we did. So what I'm going to do is there's already a hole in the bumper that's going to stay there. Um, but we're going to install a J1772 in the original fuel port and then uh, you know we'll have a um, an upgraded setup setup that I can use either 110 or 220 and I don't have to bend over as far and it's not in a place that's likely to get damaged you don't want to put a charge port on the bumper <laughs> and for instance these two uh, spots there's a spot on the bumper and there's a spot on the tailgate here those weren't there when we had the vehicle originally when we converted it those are new matter of fact we painted the bumper because it was uh, in pretty bad shape so since we had pulled the bumper to drill that hole we went ahead and and painted it at that time so the bumper was fresh back in 2013 but it's seen the sandblasting and and the UV rays and everything of the desert for you know over eight years so anyway it doesn't look perfect anymore um, and it's got that little tiny bit of little damage here and uh, just some well no it's actually got a little little bit of a dent a little bit of a dent right along this line down here doesn't really show up to the eye in this lighting but um, anyway uh, that's just one practical reason why you wouldn't want to put it in a bumper <laughs> it's apt to get damaged so anyway we're going to rectify that we're going to bottom balance these cells and this thing will be new and fresh again so we're gonna you know this will probably be a fairly long video maybe I don't know but uh, we're gonna kinda go through the the process of uh, of doing this project uh, hopefully you know things will be nice and quiet during the holiday here and I can do these things without interruption and without a bunch of uh, background noise stay tuned Two things you should notice right off is one, I've got the vehicle up on ramps. And if you've watched the channel much, you'll know that uh, I use ramps a lot. Uh, two reasons mainly. One is uh, it gets the vehicle up to where I can go underneath it easily on a creeper and do what uh, I need to do. And on this one, we actually have a few things to do underneath because I'll be running the wire for the charge port underneath and uh, going from the stock fuel uh, port location back to our our treasure chest where we have our charger and the chargers in there uh, you can see the stickers on the side of it so forth I don't have any lighting in there at the moment but anyway the other thing is I have straps attached to the compartment doors and that's just to make sure that that door doesn't accidentally come down while I'm working on these cells. Um, the cells have protective pieces, uh, what Jack Rickard with EVTV called cell booties. Um, they're on the cells so that the cells that are exposed when you pull the tray out, uh, if the door were to come down, it's not going to make contact with anything and, and cause a short. But I will be removing those cell booties, removing the interconnects, and removing the cells. So, as a, you know, extra safety precaution, uh, this is what I do. You would have noticed that in our con original conversion. A video so forth I mean you could remove the door but I think this is the path of least resistance just hold it with the strap it's really not in the way I can sit on my little chair and uh, my little you know mechanics um, 
seat or chair, whatever they call it, and and roll around and do what I need to do comfortably. So that's the uh, the the start. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the hold down straps, and so we have straps that uh, lock these glides in place so they can't roll anywhere and then we have straps that go over the top and they're very very tight yeah, and like I said we've driven this quite a few miles in the last year and a half on all types of roads and even off-road and so no that has been a very effective hold down method for this vehicle and so I'll remove the straps and uh, we'll slide out those uh, those trays for access to the cells. Here's the battery tray um, extended. And so, as I said, first thing I'll do is remove these covers. Disconnect the interconnect right there first. And then remove them all the way back. I will remove this one on both ends so that both sides are, are no longer um, have continuity. So that'll be first, these two links on this side and the other side. And then, uh, yeah, remove all the interconnects. And then I will re remove the cells and um, keep track. I don't think uh, we have the space numbered, so I know which one is which, but I don't think I have the numbers on the cells. So we will put the numbers on the cells because we're wanting to keep track of them from this point on. Um, I kept careful track of them when we pulled them out before and uh, measured them. I don't think we removed them. I don't remember now. It's been a year and a half. But anyway, we're going to be removing them this time because we're going to bottom balance them. So, on with the program. You can see with the vehicle up on the ramps, this is a real comfortable working height. And so I can do all this very comfortably and don't have to bend over or anything. So, I always recommend doing things that are efficient, comfortable, and easy. It seems to me some people just always do things the hard way. Well, I guess you get to a certain age, you realize there's more than one way to skin a cat, and it's real quick and easy to put it up on ramps and not have to bend over, whatever. And even if I'm sitting here, this is a perfect height. So this puts the vehicle at a real good working height, which is important to me because I'll be spending a few hours uh, all together doing this. Well, I've removed all the interconnects and I've numbered the cells on the sides so I, um, I can keep track when I remove these and put them on the workbench for bottom balancing. Now this will be the first time that these cells have been removed in almost 10 years. And so, be interesting to see what, see what we see. <laughs> um, this is a little different in that this is only a frame. And typically we have, if we have a frame like this, we have um, an ABS insert. So this would have been surrounded it's got ABS on the bottom, but uh, on, on the sides, uh, it doesn't have anything. And we couldn't put anything on the top. We had to um, notch a gusset as it was. This, uh, this is just a fairly tight package. And so we couldn't, you know, we didn't have any more width this way. We didn't have much in length, it was just bare necessities here. So we'll see what these things look like after riding around. They've only been on the road, oh, about 
two and a half years of total driving time. The rest of the time it was just sitting in the desert. So this will be kind of interesting since we don't normally get to see something that we've done uh, come back uh, into our possession after such a, a period of time. All of our conversions uh, are still on the road to my knowledge and this one and the 280Z are two that we happen to um, have the opportunity to, to, to acquire. The other interesting thing is that both of those vehicles are vehicles that we happen to do video series on. And so we can go back and look at what we were doing back when um, some of our thoughts and so forth. Uh, so that's interesting. And so um, we're going to pull these out. Now I'll show you how we pull the first one out. And then uh, once you get the first one out, the others come out easily. And uh, hopefully, uh, I'm hoping these things aren't swollen or any other issue. Um, I, I don't know. I don't anticipate any of that, but I don't know. Pull the first one out with the strap that we have that uh, just threads into the terminals here. It's a, a rope strap, so non-conductive. And hopefully this lifts out without much pressure. And indeed it does. Slid out real nice. That cell looks good. And of course all these will be cleaned uh, uh, before we reinstall them because you know having dirt and stuff on top can cause to uh, you know have leakage between your terminals or to a frame or whatever. That's another reason why we like to have the ABS in there, but the main thing with the ABS is that it's one, it's an, an insulator, but two, it's a sacrificial piece. So any little movement or vibration, it absorbs some of that, and the wear between the metal and the cell would be between that and the ABS. Although, like I said, I will inspect these, this one, other than just a little bit of dust on it and stuff, looks really good. So, I'll keep you updated. <laughs> That's what eight years in the desert looks like. Uh, and like I said, we use this thing, so... Um, but we haven't hauled any dirt with it, so... Yeah, that's got to be dust and dirt just from the desert and him driving it off-road. So, that's the battery rack um, empty. We're going to remove the rack, slide it out of the glides, pull them out of the vehicle, and that'll give us unimpeded access to the um, treasure chest where we can check um, some of the stuff we have in there and we can um, connect our new um, charge port. I don't know if we're going to put use the same junction box or new, use a new junction box. i got to take a look what we've got in there. So anyway, that's what we've got going. Here's the cells waiting to be bottom balanced. So there's 38 Cal 180 cells right there. They all seem to be um, visibly okay. So next we'll take some, uh, some measurements.